In this video, I'll summarize my tests of two rack LoRa antennas. The first is a rack 5.8 dBi antenna planned for a gateway installation at my local makerspace in Tucson, Arizona, known as ZeroCraft. And the second is a rack 3.0 dBi antenna for use on my own gateway or experimentation with a node. I'll be testing both antennas with this vector impedance analyzer, which has received high marks based on reviews from various reputable sources. In order to interpret the results from this instrument, I will spend a couple minutes going over some background on voltage standing wave ratio, or VISWAR, which is critical to understanding antenna performance. In doing so, I would like to acknowledge Paul Denisowski of Road and Schwartz, who has published a nice summary of Viswar and Return Loss on YouTube. My own slides include a few edits from Paul's show with the goal of providing context for using the Vector Impedance Analyzer, while also helping me to summarize Viswar for non-engineers like me. Viswar is related to the transfer of radio frequency power through a system like our LoRa gateway. Maximum power transfer occurs when the source of our power, in our case the rack concentrator, and the sink of that power, in our case a rack antenna, have impedances that are matched. Now if you're wondering what exactly impedance is, it's essentially the resistance to flow in a circuit when a voltage is applied at a given frequency. Note that standard impedance for systems like our rack concentrator and antenna is 50 ohms. When the impedance of our antenna doesn't match the source, some of that energy is reflected back, resulting in a less efficient operation of the system. With respect to homemade or commercial antennas, impedance varies as a function of the frequency being transmitted by the antenna. And this is why we need to ensure our antennas are tuned to a 50 ohm impedance at our frequency of interest. If our frequency of interest yields a different impedance, then we'll lose transmitted power and our antenna won't produce as strong a signal. Viswar, or voltage standing wave ratio, is used to measure the magnitude of forward power relative to reflected power, and is thus a good measure of antenna performance at a given frequency. Viswar is a function of forward wave voltage, shown in blue here, and the reflected wave voltage, shown in red. The purple line is the standing wave created by adding both the forward and reverse voltage. Viswar is calculated from the minimum and maximum amplitude of that purple standing wave shown on this graph over time. If you'd like to see a nice demonstration of this, I again recommend Paul's video. When the impedance of the source and antenna are matched at the antenna's desired frequency, both waves will match and Viswar will be one with no reflected power. However, if the impedance of the antenna varies from that of the source, Viswar will increase and the associated percent of reflected power will also increase. At a Viswar of 3, we're already losing 25% of the source power due to that power being reflected back, resulting in an antenna that performs less efficiently. Of course, we'll never have a perfectly matched impedance between our antenna and source, but you can see from this chart that we probably don't want a Viswar greater than 2, since that would result in losses greater than 10%. One way to fix this, of course, is to tune the antenna in order to realize an impedance that more closely matches our source at our frequency of interest. And there are ways to do this, the most easy of which is changing the length of the radiating element of our antenna. Given this context, we can now take a closer look at this little instrument, known as an N1201SA Vector Impedance Analyzer. An antenna can be attached to the instrument via a male SMA connector. The instrument can then be used to measure the visoire of our antenna at a user-defined frequency of interest relative to a 50 ohm impedance, which is typical of radio communication hardware. The instrument also has this nice graphical interface that lets you see how Viswar changes over a range of frequencies. It even has this nice marker feature that lets you put a marker on the display to graphically see where a frequency of interest plots relative to the Viswar response curve. Here you can see that I placed a marker at 908.5 MHz and that the associated Viswar is less than 1.5. I found this tool to be most helpful in calibrating my own homebrew antennas. 
Since I'm most interested in how nodes will perform at transmitting data to a gateway, I'm particularly interested in this range of frequencies associated with uplinking data here in the US to the Things network. For the purpose of testing, I'll select this frequency, which sits near the center of that range. I'll now demonstrate the Vizwar performance of two antennas that were donated by Rack in support of our installation at ZeroCraft. Okay, folks, so uh, I've gone ahead and I've set up the antenna and the uh, vector impedance analyzer in my backyard on this picnic table. And uh, there you can see the, uh, uh, the antennas elevated off the uh, table using this old chemistry stand. And it is clamped in place. Uh, the clamps are insulated from uh, the associated metal. And for this larger antenna, I just wanted to take a quick screenshot of the uh, expected uh, uh, frequency range for this commercial grade antenna and the expected gain. The reason I'm doing this out here, of course, is I want to make sure that I don't have any interferences uh, with respect to measurements associated with, say, nearby computer fans or lights inside the house or anything else that could bias the results on this. So I figured putting this in my backyard uh, on this wood table, elevated, uh, would probably give me a uh, better performance with me. Okay, so I got the camera set up on a tripod that'll free up my hands. Let's go ahead and turn this on. So, let's see if I can zoom in on this. There we go. So you can see that I have the frequency set at 904.5 and my uh, VSWR on this antenna is awesome. Just marginally above one, that's great. That's what I want to see. That means that I have very little reflected power and uh, most of that power is being transmitted by the antenna. So that's what I'm looking for. So this antenna performed very well. Let's go ahead and look at the graph on this. And you can see that uh, I have the marker currently at 904.5 and uh, yeah, the antennas, uh, uh, you can see that relative to the Vizwar curve, um, that marker, which is uh, what the antenna should be tuned to right now, is uh, right at the bottom of that curve. So that's what I'd like to see. So this antenna is uh, uh, looking really good. This will be a good antenna to install at uh, ZeroCraft. And uh, here's the setup for the second antenna. So this is the uh, shorter one. And there you can see what the expected uh, frequency and uh, DBI is for this commercial grade antenna. And this one, it seems to be a little bit challenged on the Vizwar front. Uh, looks like I'm reading about 2.49, uh, just rounded up to 2.5. That's above two. Uh, so I'll do the calculation shortly to figure out how much reflected power we have from this uh, smaller antenna, uh, but uh, not quite what I was hoping to see. Um, Let's go ahead and take a look at um, what the curve looks like for this antenna. And you can see that my marker uh, relative to the uh, Vizwar curve, that's where I'd like to see that marker plotted, right at the bottom of the curve. And uh, it's, it's not there, uh, not even close. Let's go ahead and see if I can move that marker to figure out what exactly this antenna is tuned to. So let me see if I can remember how to do this. There we go. Let's go the other way. So it looks like it's uh, closer to uh, 944.5 uh, megahertz on this one, probably a little bit higher. I didn't get it quite at the bottom of that Vizwar response curve, but regardless, that's uh, uh, certainly uh, higher than uh, than what's needed for, uh, for my application on this antenna. So uh, interesting, uh, interesting result. Uh, full disclosure on these setups. This is an N-type male connector. And what I need to talk to the vector network analyzer is an SMA male type connector. So I had to purchase one of these little adapters. So that is something that I'm going to add uh, between the antenna and the vector network analyzer. 
Uh, so that could have a little bit of a bearing on the performance of the antenna. So I just wanted to share that for uh, full disclosure. Please note that to ensure there wasn't some unknown error associated with the outdoor test on the smaller antenna, I did disassemble the setup, rebuilt it, tested it a few more times outdoors, and even tried moving the setup to my shop to see if there was some other environmental factor impacting performance. In fact, my shop did yield marginally better results, but the visoire remained above two, which is a threshold I've learned is commonly considered a minimum standard for antenna performance. Having said that, the overall build and fiberglass case makes this a really nice feel-worthy antenna, so I plan on opening it up at a later date to see if I can tune it myself with the vector impedance analyzer, which is perhaps something I can share in a future video. All right, so what are some of the conclusions I can derive uh, from this experiment? Well, the first is that the Rack 5.8 dBi antenna had an excellent visoire coming in uh, well under two, very close to one, uh, at 904.5 megahertz, which will make it an excellent candidate for our LoRa WAN gateway installation at ZeroCraft. Conversely, the Rack 3.0 dBi antenna had a poor visoire coming in above two, uh, closer to two and a half at 904.5 megahertz, uh, suggesting about uh, 20 percent uh, power loss in transmission. Uh, with respect to potential sources of error in measurement, um, uh, I do have to acknowledge that the vector impedance analyzer has not been calibrated prior to testing, although if calibration was an issue, I think I would have seen that show up in the, uh, in the test for the 5.8 dBi antenna. Ambient noise is another consideration, but again, uh, if there were ambient noise impacting the measurements, it, it's odd that I wouldn't have seen it uh, in the uh, 5.8 dBi test as well as the 3.0 dBi test. Also, there's that end to SMA type uh, adapter so that I could attach the antenna to the vector impedance analyzer. Um, it's possible that there was a poor connection. However, I did disassemble and assemble the antenna uh, to that little connector to the vector impedance analyzer several times and it didn't really seem to help on the 3.0 antenna. Um, regardless, the antennas were not directly connected to the VIA so there might be a little bit of bias in there. Um, on that note, um, I'm not really sure what other thing uh, might be causing error with respect to the 3.0 dBi antenna measurements, but I'm not a radio engineer. Um, if you guys see anything in the uh, setup in this video that I haven't considered, I'd really appreciate you commenting and uh, enlightening me accordingly. With these results in hand, I now feel comfortable making the trip to ZeroCraft's roof with our antenna for finalizing our formal gateway installation. In my next video, I'll estimate the expected transmitted power of the antenna, taking into account losses associated with LMR 400 cable length, and also the 5.8 dBi gain associated with the antenna. If you're interested in tracking the progress of this project, please consider subscribing for updates. Thanks.